Welcome to episode 5 of this Python Kivi series and today we'll be looking at creating something more meaningful, a sort of employee based application or GUI where you can submit an email and password and actually our button will, uh, will do something. So we'll explore a combination of ideas, the grid layout, uh, responding to events, making things a bit more dynamic and we'll be building on elements that we learned about in the last episode which were things like sizing and positioning and also exploring alternative ideas to this so as you can see i can enter um, an email just uh, obviously an arbitrary email address joeblogs.gmail.com and you can see the password automatically sort of uh, stars those out as we would expect in password submit submit behavior and then we can supply another test email so test at gmail.com another password and we'll say test zero submit that it disappears but it has actually been printed to the console so although we're not quite at the stage of connecting up databases we'll look at that later right now we then get the user email and the user password that we had submitted it sent to the console so obviously uh a big point here moving forward um, and bringing a more sort of dy dynamic element to our GUIs and applications, exploring new layouts. There's lots to learn here. So I'm going to head straight in. We're going to reconfigure um, the files that we previously sent out, write out some different code. Um, yeah, and, and follow along. Um, and yeah, let's build something, something more interesting this episode. So we're going to approach this in three sections within this tutorial, essentially. The first one, we've got our main.py file that we've been using. I've just left some dependencies there. You can copy to import. I deleted anything that was in our test.kv file. Um, and we're essentially building this out again from scratch, just so it's easy to follow along with. It's worth noting this weekend, I'll try to get um, some of the code put into a GitHub repo so that you can easily access that for following along also but this should be easy enough to uh to approach the the tutorial with so the first thing that i need to do after we import these dependencies and you'll realize why they're important soon is to create our first class so this will be what i'm just calling test grid and this will just inherit from a widget now this is going to give us slightly more flexibility than before uh, in regards to layout and things which i'll explain later but we can just use pass there because we're not actually going to do anything just yet. We will soon. We'll also have um, test app. So we will go ahead and define that class. And that will just inherit from, as you can see, kivi.app app. So this will be the main application class. And this will build and run the GUI. As you can see, we have the build method there. So we'll return an instance of the test grid class when the application is launched. And the last step, and you'll get used to the syntax because it's sort of we're just building blocks, so you'll always sort of have this. We have is if name equal to main, this ensures that the application is only executed when the scripts run directly. So when it's not, uh, rather than when it's imported as a module, this will create an instant of instance of test app and call the run method, and then we essentially start the Kivi application. So the important element there is actually test at parenthesis dot run in the parenthesis, which will essentially um, get the cogs turning. As you can see, we have nothing in the test.kv yet. Uh, I'll usually use control S to save, but just to show you that I'm constantly saving to prevent some caching issues when we build out the GUI. Um, and you can see when I run this, as expected, there's no design here because we haven't done anything uh, with our test.kv file. But this is just about what we're what we're going to move on to anyway. Uh, so don't worry about that. So next up, we're going to define the bare bones of the design so that you can see how everything's going to look. And then we'll look at stitching this all together and having some functionality there. So let's look at our standard design. Of course, we're moving forward to a more real world sort of form submission here. So that's quite exciting. We're using the grid layout um, to give us a bit more flexibility for this, this use case. Now, as I said earlier, we've got the test grid rule here at the top within the angled brackets, and then we're defining a grid layout within that. Well, what was the advantage of using a standard widget rather than before 
where we used a box layout widget for the box layout class. Well, one of the reasons is flexibility. It doesn't come with a lot of the predefined behavior. And for that reason, when we use the size property, we can use root.width and root.height to automatically scale to the size of the window. Um, and then I've just applied some padding um, to give it some, some border essentially and spacing to have space between certain elements. And we'll see this when we, when we build this out. So we have that first grid layout. And what that does is it arranges the child widgets vertically. We have one column specified. And within there, we're nesting another grid layout. So this is going to have two further columns. And then this will contain the two sets of label and text input widgets that we require for that form submission, essentially. And this will make more sense when we run the file. You'll see currently in text input, I don't have anything that's deliberate. We'll come back to that because that's going to be fundamental in sort of stitching together that dynamic behavior uh, for the button and actually submitting information. Again, the text input will have no information. The label is just essentially specifying the user what they need to input. So that will be the email and their password. And then we can go down into the button section. So we take the button out a level so that it fills the appropriate space. So it moves out to that nested grid layout level. And then what we can do is start to specify some things in here. So we can have the text of the button, which is submit. Uh, the size hint will provide. So we'll make that um, to essentially take the full space that we have available for the X, the horizontal, but the Y axis will just be half the original size so that isn't as blocky and, and obvious and large. It will specify background color that we've, we've done before, which is that sort of gold. Um, and I'll, I'll add in a little tip here um, because background colors do still look a little strange even when you get this RGBA value right in Kivi. But that is the basic design. So we'll go ahead and look at running this and just check how it looks. And um, we won't have the the event functionality when we click the button. Um, but we've essentially here specified out how our design will look on the whole. So we can run this. And when that happens, we've got the email password. And that is essentially text. So a label uh, for email and password essentially prompting us what we should enter. I can do tests at gmail.com, but you'll see I don't get that password um, functionality where things are starred out yet, but we will. We'll come back to that. And the submit button, that gray looks a bit, uh, that gold looks a bit dark. Now, the reason for that is because you'll notice by standard the button is a gray kind of color. Well, that's actually a default image that's applied with that button. So that obviously gives the gold a bit of a tinge. So it starts to look a bit strange. So we can actually specify background underscore normal and we'll just give that value a blank in between two single quotation strings or double quotation strings whichever you prefer and you can see now i get the actual gold so that's how you can get around that color issue because otherwise things just tend to look a bit distorted and strange now that's fine but next up we actually are going to look into making this dynamic and making this a more functional GUI uh, that can interact with users. So the first thing that we need to do in our Kivi file is use something called a property alias for our email and our password text inputs. Now what this does is it uses what we'll define in Python the object property mechanism to create a property in this case called email and link it to the text input with the ID email. So just think of this as a way to stitch together and make the Kivi file and the Python file speak to each other. We can do the same thing with um, passwords. So when we go to the text input, we'll create an ID of password. And this is essentially going to allow our Python file um, and the text inputs, the widgets there in the Kivi file, interact and speak to each other. I'm going to take this opportunity when I adjust the ID for password to also um, use password true. And what this does is it gives us the asterisk functionality when the user inputs our password into that text input box. So it essentially gives it typical password GUI behavior, but we will still see the password in the console. So now if we go ahead and run this, you will see that we have a standard email again, as expected, we'll just say joeblogs at gmail.com, 
But now if we type in a password, we get that expected behavior because we set that password property um, equal to true, that Boolean value. So that is working as expected now. Now we can move through to the Python file to actually stitch these different elements together between that text input ID um, and the property alias that we specified above. We need to input this logic somewhere into our Python file also. So what we'll do, we'll actually start to build out this class test grid widget to enable this functionality. So what we can do, we can define the email and password properties, like I said, by using object property. So this will allow us to be the mechanism to connect those elements together. So these properties will act as a references to the text input, input widgets with IDs, email and password as discussed. And by using the object property, we directly access the content, or in our case, the text of the text input widgets from the Python code. Now we can also define out the button method uh, within the test grid class also it stays within this level so this will be triggered when the submit button is pressed in the GUI and we're going to connect this up after there's one last stage we need to do in the Kivi file um, to actually bring this together but the purpose of this button um, method is to actually go ahead and print the email and password that's entered by the user. So this is how we essentially get this into the console like we saw. So we'll get the user email that the user specified and the user password that they also specified. So that looks pretty good there and we can just round this off. Um, and it's worth noting as well that this will also print the email and password entered by the user but it clears the text in both input fields, so it also performs that action. We've got the self.email.txt is equal to blank and self.password.txt is equal to blank. And this will achieve the desired functionality that we require. So now we can see we could input in an arbitrary email, just a test email and password. And you may be filled in thinking things will work, but when you click submit, nothing is actually going to happen. So how do we get around this? Well, we forgot to do one last step. So what we can do in the Kivi file, we need to create an on press event and that will occur within the button widget in order just to bring all of this together. So within the button at the end, we can just uh, use on press. So what we can do there is just set that um, essentially equal to the root and the button and then use our parenthesis and that will essentially be able to to run um, so then once we go ahead and run this file again we've connected everything together with the um, going ahead and using the uh, the object property now we have that button event and everything should work so when we input in a sample email uh, and we'll use a password again you'll see we get the correct behavior with the asterisk and when we click submit it automatically removes our inputs and it will log this to the console. So again, I'll put in another test, test at gmail.com, another test password. And as you can see, everything works as expected. We get the user email connected to the console and password, and we get two cases of that because that's how many we entered. So this is a big step on. We're now looking at dynamic events, capturing that and simulating a real world but basic GUI. And it didn't take much more effort on top of what we've already learned. So in the next episode, I'm going to go over some more handy tips and tricks. Um, we'll look at the Kivi Builder potentially. And from there, we again will gradually increase the complexity. And like this, we will look at more serious um, and sort of value adding uh, practical projects in order to implement our knowledge.